Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of r slash petty revenge. Entitled Parker parked in my driveway so I blocked them in and got drunk all weekend. Friday night I came home from work to find someone on our block was having a large party and someone decided they were entitled to park in my driveway. Keep in mind my driveway is a single car width lined with a retaining wall on both sides and a garage at the end. Essentially impossible for a tow truck to come pull them out without property damage. Seeing this and the lack of street parking I took this as a cue to park right behind them in my driveway. Now a few hours go by and their entitled parker is now knocking at my door demanding I move my car so she can leave. Seeing as they were demanding, I informed them that I had been drinking and would not move my car. The entitled parker then decides to call the police to get them to force me to move. When the police knocked on my door, I was sure to grab a beer from the fridge before I answered to talk to the officer. I had informed him that after I got home I was unwinding and had been drinking and was in no shape to drive. At this point their hands were tied because they couldn't tow her car out, I'm in no shape to drive, and I'm legally parked in my driveway. I ended up telling the entitled parker that since it is a long weekend I would be on a weekend long bender and they could come move my car after I go to work on Tuesday. Next story. How I gutted my homeowners associations. This is the story of how I completely changed out my community's homeowners associations board and foreclosed on one of their houses after they disrespected me. Backstory. A few years ago, I bought my first house in a medium-size, 500 to 1,000 homes, neighborhood in a southern state. It had an homeowners associations, but I actually picked the neighborhood because they had the lowest homeowners associations dues in the city, the fewest rules, and the house was by far the nicest one I could afford in my budget. After a few weeks, I get a violation notice from the homeowners associations telling me that I had two violations needing correction. 1. My lawn was not green enough. 2. My trash cans were too close to my driveway. I was thoroughly confused about number 1 as it was February, in the middle of winter, so of course my lawn was dead, like pretty much everyone else's, so I had assumed that either this was a mistake or an existing offense from the previous owner. As for the trash cans, I kept them on the side of my house and I think when the homeowners associations came by, my trash can stuck out past the sidewall one foot, so how dare I? I shrugged them off and continued on. Come March, I got another notice, this time fining me for both violations. Each one cost me $100 and they wanted the money in two weeks. I was pissed. This has made no sense and I was not about to let them just try and get money for BS violations. So, I called the management company that worked with the board to get them appealed. The lady told me that I needed to appeal directly to the board and that I could do so in the next annual meeting in a few days. So, I of course showed up to the meeting. Prior to it starting, I met with a few homeowners and learned that they were all there for similar BS violations and were pissed off too. I then talked with one of the members of the board about the fine appeals process. He was older guy in his 70s with short gray hair and a very worn and angry face. He asked what I was getting fined for, and when I told him, he just looked at me and said, and you should get fined for that. Young people like you not taking care of their homes is the whole reason I got on this board. Learn to be a better property owner. This dude was the vice president of a volunteer board telling me that I did not know how to take care of my house. What a sad life. The meeting then started and the moderator mentioned that since this was an annual meeting, we would be voting on three-fifths board members. They had some applicants to the board, and we could also nominate someone today. That's when I had the idea of how I could get my revenge. When the election part of the meeting came, I nominated myself, gave some BS speech about homeowner associations are not here to make money and that I wanted to serve my community. I won in a landslide and you could see the board members getting annoyed because they had scowled during my speech. After the meeting, I appealed my violations in a very elegant way and they agreed to waive my trash can violation. As for the grass one, apparently since I had weeds growing in my yard, like tiny patch in the corner, they were still fining me because the weeds were turning yellow after I sprayed them. I was dumbfounded how they could get away with this, but they used a technicality in the bylaws that I had signed, so I ended up losing $100. Revenge. I will be honest, I had not expected this to work. After joining the board of five, including myself, I was appointed secretary and had to help maintain meeting notes and review records. They specifically told me that I was not allowed to propose new policies, 
but I could vote on new ones proposed by the vice president or president, which I later learned was actually a violation of their own rules. I voted every new rule down as long as I was in that position. I decided that my best course of action was to listen to how the others operated and look for an opening to get each of them off the board. The first opening came when the president, who literally looked like the most Karen woman ever, mentioned that she had wanted to find for flowers that were not neutral color. Basically, if a homeowner wanted to add something like turquoise flowers, we would find them. She apparently had a neighbor that had flowers that she didn't like, and she wanted to use the board to stop them. It was pretty insane. I then started my revenge on her. I started a message thread on Slack since that's how we communicated with the other board members and asked what they had thought about her policy and reasoning. After far too much deliberation, two of them honestly thought that this was okay, we agreed that the policy went too far. I then made a long post in the main channel telling her that her actions were not only wrong, but that she should be excused from the board. When she inevitably flipped out, I called a board meeting in the following week, and the other four board members voted her off for targeting a community member for personal gain. She gave a sob story about how the board was her life and that the neighborhood was like her child, but I didn't care. That was one down. I convinced one of my good neighbor friends to join a little later on to take her spot. The next members I targeted were the treasurer and director, as I wanted to save the vice president for last. They were actually pretty easy to get off the board because they were very easily swayed by public opinion. So, I made a fake account on Nextdoor and waited until spring when most of the violations go out. When the letters went out, I looked for angry posts on Nextdoor. I then would comment on each one giving them the first names of the two board members as the culprits and told them to come to the next homeowners association's meeting to appeal. It worked far better than I had expected. During the next meeting, over 50 people showed up and called out those by name. It was glorious. During the open session, community members grilled those two for their poor policies, even though they did not make most of them. The vice president, now president after the other one resigned, tried to defend them, but ultimately failed. The two members were so distraught after the meeting, and I told them that maybe they should resign, and they both did. That was two more down, both of which were replaced by a couple who came to the same meeting and wanted to get rid of these rules. Finally, the board had been flipped to four out of five people wanting to get rid of all these dumb rules. The president however, was still same old angry hateful man. He tried to add more rules to increase violation revenue and we voted him down every time. He started to get annoyed, but stayed steadfast to the board. I tried a lot of tactics to get him to leave and not much swayed him. A few months went by and we started with a new management company. They had a much better style of property management and a website for looking through our community's records as well as automated reports. When we got our first fines report, I hit pay dirt. The president's house appeared and he owed around $10,000. Apparently he had open violations that he had never paid and the other management company hid it from the board for him since he had been on the board for close to seven years. So, I looked into remedies. Since his fines were over $3,000, our bylaws stated that a majority vote of the board could start in homeowners associations for closure on the home, which I still think is insane that homeowner associations can do that. So, I got all the docs together and double-checked with the new management company that the fines were correct, which they confirmed. I called an emergency board session, presented the information, and four-fifths of us voted to start the foreclosure process. The president got angry, cursed, and left the meeting early. We were informed a few days later that the president had resigned, paid his fine, and put his house up for sale. While I am sad we couldn't force a foreclosure, at least he was off the board. I am currently president to this day, and I have reduced the fining policy to be a maximum of $400 and homeowners can appeal any time that they wish digitally. In addition, I have banned any grass fines until May, and trash can violations have been super relaxed. Moral of the story, never fine me $200, call me a stupid young kid, and expect to not lose your house. Next story. Sister-in-law insulted my kids so I exposed her lies. Sister-in-law is the kind of mom that always has to one-up other kids. She constantly talks about how her kids are smarter, taller, faster etc. than her friend's kids. She literally bragged about them peeing more than her friend's kids when they were babies lol. 
It was worse when my husband and I had our twins. Suddenly everything was a competition that her kids always won. One of my girls rolled over at four months, her son had rolled over when he was just a week old. The twins both took their first steps around 13 months, her daughter was running at four months. She didn't actually start walking until around 16 months. She even changed the weight of her kids' birth weights which makes them both heavier than the current heaviest newborn in America. It's so weird that she feels the need to tell such obvious lies, especially to people who know she's lying because they were there when her kids were small. I got annoyed when she went from lying about her own kids to telling me there is something wrong with mine. The girls are a few months shy of two and they're both healthy, on track and hitting their milestones. Sister-in-law has become obsessed with the idea that there is something wrong with them because they're not speaking in long sentences. Of course they're not, they're not even two. They're both developmentally on track but she insists that her children were speaking in five to six word phrases by 18 months. Spoiler, they were not. Honestly, her son is almost seven and I can still barely understand a word the kid says. My husband and I ignored her but she took it too far when I got a call from her friend who works in early intervention who was under the impression I was very concerned about my children. We talked and her friend confirmed that yes, they are on track and no, there's nothing to worry about. I finally lost my patience. Hey, her kids are breaking almost every record there is and that should be celebrated. We had dinner with my husband's family on Saturday, kids were in another room, and I decided it was the perfect time to give her my gift a booklet I had printed and laminated called the White Claw Book of World Records. I printed all the supposed milestones of her kids, complete with photos and info of the actual world record holders now that they had been pushed to second place. She flipped through the first couple of pages, went beat red and called me in butthole. Her husband took it from her and got through the first page before laughing hysterically and asking her why the hell she was still lying? Apparently, it was not the first time they'd talked about her lying about their kids. She stormed out but texted me later that night and asked why I'd humiliated her when all she'd ever tried to do was help me get my kids the help they needed. But if that was how I wanted to treat her then she'd stop. So I guess it's a win for me. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, Share and subscribe the channel or posts.